Welcome back to Home Gym Hacks and Reviews. Today I'll be reviewing the new Powertech leg press. If you're in the market for a leg press, I don't think you'll want to miss this. Within the last few years, a lot of new home gym equipment manufacturers have made their way into the marketplace, and some of these companies are starting to knock off Powertech's designs. And just as they are doing that, Powertech is bringing new products to their lineup and updating some of their flagship pieces to stay ahead of the pack. First, Powertech released their Sissy Squat Pro. This is the nicest Sissy Squat bench I have ever seen. Details like the angle shin pads and band pegs separate this from most. Next, Powertech updated their compact leg sled and improved upon one of my all-time favorite leg machines. Powertech then updated their lap machine and made it stronger and sharper looking than ever. It is one of the most compact lap machines while at the same time having one of the highest weight capacities. Most recently, Powertech updated their leg press attachment, improving its original design and giving it a 400 pound max weight capacity instead of a 300 pound max weight capacity. Like this, Powertech sent me the leg press a little early so I could get plenty of reps and provide a meaningful review. And now the leg press has undergone some major improvements. This is LP23. I had two of the different models that preceded this one, and a few years ago, this is what I said about LP19. Here's the Powertech leg press. I've had two of these over the years, and I think it's really hard to find another leg press that matches this quality at this price point. Roadrunner Freight shipped this across the country to a local terminal in five days. I scheduled a delivery, which I have to be here to sign for, but the trucking company was a no-show. So rather than waiting for a second delivery, I just went to the local depot, which isn't that far away, and picked it up myself. A forklift driver drove out and just put the pallet right in the back of my truck. LP23 consists of two boxes, both of which sustained a little damage during shipping, but Powertech does such a great job packing, nothing inside of the boxes sustained any damage. Each component is individually wrapped in either plastic wrap, cardboard, or bubble wrap, and styrofoam separates the pieces. It took about 30 minutes to unbox everything, and there aren't too many total pieces that make up the leg press. There are three hardware packs, and as always, Powertech includes the touch-up paint with their big ticket items. It comes in handy when I bang one piece of equipment into another, and I need to hide a blemish of my own making. Assembly was super easy. Granted, I have assembled two of the previous models, but Powertech's instructions have improved so much that this took just over an hour to assemble. The assembly is broken down into seven easily digestible pages. Just make sure the Powertech sticker faces out on the center post, and I do recommend having a second person when it's time to connect the foot plate and upper and lower support tubes because the three pieces are interconnected. Every time I look at this machine, I think it looks futuristic, and that's because of the updates. Some of them are so simple, yet so ingenious, and they took what was the best residential leg press on the market and made it even better. I'm going to start at the bottom and then work my way up as I explain some of the updates that this machine has undergone. First, there are now five points of contact with the ground rather than four, and these two in the middle are new and offer support where there never was any before. The back pad now has four adjustments rather than three. Here are the four back pad settings. The first position is 30 degrees, the next is 35 degrees, the next is 40 degrees, and the sharpest position is 45 degrees, and adjustment is super smooth. Rather than the T-shaped adjustment knob, Powertech is continuing to update all of their adjustment knobs with this awesome branded looking ergonomic twist knob. Also, the back pad support tube lines up differently than it did on LP19, for enhanced stability. In one of my older videos, I said this about the handles, which also served as the safety bars, which was an area for improvement, and then I came up with this hack. When I'm going really heavy on this machine, I don't feel like the handle placement is perfect. So instead of grabbing the handles, I grab the angles 90 grips, and then when I push off, the handles fall out of place, and then I perform my leg press, and then when I'm done, I let go of the angles 90 grips, and then move the handles back into place. Now, simply and ingeniously, Powertech welded handles onto the seat support tube. I would like to think that maybe my hack had something to do with this upgrade. Each handle is about six inches in length with the same rubber grip that's found on the lever gym, multi-press, and most of Powertech's products. The safety bar handle is about a foot long, making it easy to reach and engage the bars. I've read some leg press reviews for other brands where people mention their safety stick and catch. Powertechs don't. These are smooth and quiet, because when Powertech sends this out, their safeties are lubricated and covered in plastic. This section of the plate is angled at 35 degrees, and this section of the plate is angled at 60 degrees. This is one of the updates, and it provides greater variety in foot placement. The rubber stoppers look a little thicker to me, but they may be the same size, and they prevent metal-on-metal -metal contact. The four stainless steel weight horns are now angled, which eliminates the need for collars, although Powertech includes four, and I use them as change plates. And the biggest and newest update, and the one I saved for last, is the re-engineered upper frame of the machine. 
The biggest critique that I had for the models before this one was the need to lower the carriage all the way into the bottom position to load these lower weight horns. Truthfully, that was never that big of an issue for me because these top weight horns could hold 1245s, but nonetheless, it was an area for improvement and PowerTech took care of it. The machine's two uprights simply got swapped out for one center upright. Now the lower weight horns can be loaded no matter what position the carriage is in. Luckily, the back side of this machine can be pushed directly against the wall, which will save space, and it will not interfere with loading and unloading the weight horns. And plate storage would have been a cool feature on the previous model, but it will not work on this model because if there was a storage post here and plates are loaded here, the plates would bang into the plates that are on the storage post. What separates the PowerTech leg press from almost every other leg press, including commercial models, is its incredibly small footprint while at the same time having a 1,000 pound max weight capacity. This machine is only 81 inches long, an incredibly compact 32 inches wide, and 52 inches tall. Basically all of the same measurements as the previous models. The guide rods are angled at 45 degrees and they are a massive two and a quarter inches in diameter. The seat pad is 13 inches by 14 inches. The back pad is 32 inches long. It's 13 and a half inches wide at its widest point and 10 and a half inches wide at its most narrow point. It is the same back pad that's on the FID bench, which is moderately grippy and the yellow stitching is a nice touch. Each stainless steel weight horn is about 10 inches long and the carriage has three locking points and the bottom safety. Here is what the platform looks like when it's touching the bottom safety. It is nine inches away from the frame of the machine. As you can see, I can get a full range of motion and I would have to measure LP19 but I feel like this platform gives me a little greater range of motion. The first lockout point is 17 inches away from the frame. The next lockout point is 24 inches away from the frame. And the last lockout point, which I really can't even reach, is 32 inches away from the frame. So this would be good for someone with extremely long legs, which I obviously don't have. The diamond foot plate is one of the largest foot plates on the market at an impressive 29 and a quarter inches wide by 21 and a half inches tall which is about the same size as the previous models. Here is my size 11 shoe on the platform, just to give some frame of reference for how big this platform actually is. The carriage travels on eight bearing driven nylon wheels that are smooth and quiet. As a whole, the leg press feels rock solid. It is 12 gauge steel and all of the welds are clean. This leg press offers a lot of versatility and the platform is big enough to offer plenty of foot positions. I can perform single leg presses, calf raises, and depending on my foot placement, I can work different muscles in the lower body while pressing. To start the exercise, I can't haphazardly push the platform all the way up because I'll crash into the next safeties. Instead, I just push up a couple of inches, disengage the safeties, and then start the press. It is smooth, it is quiet, the platform weighs 60 pounds, and the actual weight I'm lifting is about 75% of the weight loaded on the machine, whereas the compact leg sled is about 50% of the weight loaded on the machine. My preferred foot placement to target the quads and glutes to a lesser degree is just below the angled portion of the platform. If I move my feet any lower, it's hard to keep my entire foot planted because I have terrible dorsiflexion. If I take a higher and wider stance, I bias the adductor magnus. The angled foot plate offers more stability with my feet in this position when compared to the old model because I have the lip to push against. Now I want to talk about the hamstrings and the leg press. No matter what foot placement I take on this platform, I am not really going to work my hamstrings. This has been supported in multiple studies and it's just an old bodybuilding myth. So when someone says they feel their hamstrings working or they experience doms in their hamstrings the next day, it's actually the adductor magnus. And as others have said before, don't confuse sensation for stimulation. The single leg press is a great variation that can easily be performed on this leg press. This is much easier than performing lunges or Bulgarian split squats because I have greater stability. Also, I don't need to hold on to anything where grip can be a limiting factor, and I don't need to load my spine. The bottom of the foot plate offers a great place for calf raises. I can get a full range of motion and target my calves without loading my spine and while having pelvic stability. I will note my feet hit the plates on the lower weight horns when I'm doing calf raises, but using the collars as spacers is an easy fix. Although at the moment there isn't a dedicated band feature, it's easy enough to loop bands around the handles and lower weight horns. I don't think this is an exercise I'll perform, but the leg press can be used for a Viking style press. With my lower back issues, I am probably one of the only people who needs to do this. I am just fortunate the last model and this model allows me to do this hack. I turn this tube around and when I'm doing calf raises, I connect this bolt because that exercise doesn't aggravate my lower back. But when it's time to press, I lower the tube down and use pre-cut stall mats as spacers so I don't have metal on metal and then I lay the seat back. 
This hack decreases the angle of the seat and it does shorten the machine's range of motion slightly, but the trade-off for me is necessary. But my hack doesn't stop there. Using the leg press in this manner required me to rely on my hands to keep from sliding back, so I came up with this, one of my favorite hacks in a long time. I looped daisy chains around the handles and covered the daisy chains with seatbelt covers to make this more comfortable. Now I don't need to rely on my hand strength to keep me from sliding back and the daisy chains help to keep me positioned closer to the platform. Powertech has three standalone leg machines and their leg press attachment. Let's see how they all stack up. The leg press attachment is better than I expected. Unlike other horizontal leg presses, I can start from the top position, it takes up very little space, and it's much less expensive when compared to other leg press machines. The leg press attachment really lights up my quads, and more importantly, it doesn't aggravate my lower back. I don't have to hack it like I do the standalone leg press. It sells for $450, and it has a 400 pound max weight capacity, which will be more than enough for most people. The lever squat comes in at $949, and it has a 500 pound max weight capacity. It's great for squats, calf raises, and Viking presses. This was one of my best made machines. There aren't many moving pieces, so maintenance and repair is basically non-existent. This is the least expensive of the standalone leg machines. It has a small footprint, and if you're fine with loading your spine, it's a great option. Now let's compare my two favorite Powertech leg machines, the new compact leg sled and the new leg press. Both are great options. The sled costs $10.99 and has a 700 pound max weight capacity. The leg press costs $15.99, the same as the old model, and has a 1,000 pound max weight capacity. For someone like my wife who is recovering from knee and hip surgery, it is much easier to get in position on the sled. It's basically just sit and push. Also, the sled has a range of motion limiter, which is beneficial for her rehab, but the leg press doesn't offer that. And for the leg press, it takes a little effort to get into and out of position, but the handle on the foot plate helps. In terms of comparing the footprint for each machine, the compact leg sled is almost two feet wider than the leg press because of its weight horns, and the leg press is 20 inches longer than the compact leg sled. If I go back nearly three years when I compared the previous two models of each machine, I gave the win to the compact leg sled, and I still do. I just find it more lower back friendly, and I like being over the weight instead of being under the plates. Ultimately, I think most people will prefer the leg press over the compact leg sled because of its higher weight capacity and it being a staple in most commercial gyms. A lot of times when someone starts their home gym journey, they start with a power rack and a bench, and their next two most sought after pieces are a lat pull down and a leg press. Now you may be wondering why I didn't choose one of the leg press hack squat combos. As I've mentioned before, I don't like the hack squat exercise. That's how I originally hurt my lower back. There is some spinal loading and the hack squat exercise always hurt my knees. So my issue with the hack squat is more personal than a knock on the exercise. Also, because I have the compact leg sled, I don't really need the hack squat anyway. And lastly, with some of those leg press hack squat combos, it doesn't do either exercise really all that well. The foot plate is too small and the range of motion is too short. If you are shopping around for a leg press, it's going to be tough to find any that match the quality with these features at this price point. Every component on this machine feels robust. It operates smoothly, it takes up very little space, and it looks awesome. This is the leg press machine I have been waiting for. I love having variety in my training. On one training day for the lower body, I use the compact leg sled. On another training day for the lower body, I use my DIY belt squat. And on the third day, I use this leg press. I continue to decline opportunities to be an affiliate for multiple well-known companies. That list has grown to over 20, and I have ended all of my other affiliations with equipment manufacturers except for Gempin. I put all of my eggs in the Powertech basket. That is how much I believe in this company and the direction they're heading in, just like I have for the last 15 years. Other than being an affiliate, I am not part of the Powertech team. I just felt it was disingenuous for me to rep other brands when I am most passionate about Powertech. With that being said, anytime you make a Powertech purchase, including this new leg press, please consider using my Powertech affiliate link at no additional cost to you. That link can be found in my YouTube bio about section. It helps me out, and most importantly, it lets Powertech know that I am helpful to their brand. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Take care.